Man, Diddy was afraid of Fab. You know what I'm saying? Because it, Fab came with a lot of baggage. Everybody in New York knew Fab could rap, and he was supposed to be the new mace. So Puffy was very interested in being involved with Fab, you know, but there's a lot of moving particles <laughs> in that equation that most of y'all just don't see or, you know, don't get. But you look at it, Fab was, you would say, it was Red Cafe, Fab, Papoose, and those three were like highly stouted. Uh, you could throw Cassidy in there too. Those guys were like, oh, the streets was talking. Like they finna be the next ones at the time. But Fab was entirely different. Fab was a, oh, he's special. You know, he could sell it. He reminds you of Mace. Red Cafe reminds you of Jay. You know, and then you got Papoose. He reminds you of a lyrical Nas. And then you got Cassidy, who could just spill the battle rapper. You know, so it, everybody was like, this is the new generation. Hip-hop's going here. We, we taking off. So it was like a bidding war in the streets. Who was finna work with who? Now, at the time, Diddy was, he wanted to work with Fab, but he knew what was surrounding Fab. And at the time, Diddy couldn't really get down with it. He wanted to, but he couldn't because he was facing a, a, a trial <laughs> at the time, you know, and he, he mostly was looking at most of the people in his camp were going to jail and screwing up and they just you know the loom situation didn't work out and now you're in a situation where fab is up and coming and it was his team and the, there are situations around him that were not productive at the time where the, where puff could see this is gonna go bad And that's something he didn't want. So when people say, hey, Fab remind me of Mace. I understand why. And this is why Diddy was very interested in Fab. But this is also why a lot of other people were interested in Fab. Well, you got to understand, man. Um, he's from Brooklyn. Fab people got into it with Marbury uh, also. And this was all linked together with the Jay-Z situation. And, you know, and Fab got shot, you know, in the leg and all this stuff. You know, those Brooklyn cats were some of the people that was associated with with Fab Crew, allegedly, that's the continuing part of the story with Marbury, you know. So, it was going to lead to that situation where Fab got popped. The Barney and Boone there to get your ass popped, don't believe me, ask Fab. Began to that him in the cut like germs, I move dirt like worms. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So... The reason why 50 know that because the same people that was managing Fat was used to manage 50 back in the day. They was like some of his first managers. So <clears throat> 50 already knew that those dudes, you know, they were street dudes. They didn't play. Now...
it was a difficult situation where Puffy saw all this. You know what I'm saying? It was like, I'm out. <laughs> I can't deal with him. Because Clue, when he signed with Clue, DJ Clue, on the Desert Storm, this when all the radio DJs were signing people. You know, K. Slay had Papoose. Uh, Swiss had Cassidy. Clue had Fab. So you saw how the circle was going. And I'm trying to think. I don't know who had Red Cafe. I think he was just out there. But if you was going to blow up in New York, this was the way to go. The DJs at that time, back in the early 2000s, they were going to make you hot. They were going to keep you hot. So when you're like, man, this dude like Mace, man. Everybody was going to be a, such a bidding war for Fab. But Busta Rhymes had Electra Records at the time. And before Electra failed, they was throwing money around. Because they had just got a some type of distribution deal. and So they could work with uh, other artists for labels and try to get some of the young talent. But Electra was going to fold. Then, you know, it was just a done deal at that time. After he got the Electra deal, you know, Diddy was out. Diddy was just out because of the situations Diddy was going through. Diddy was going through his own trial. That's one. Diddy dealing with a relaunch of his label, new artists, new everything. That's when the whole revamp bad boy came out with G Depp. And then G Depp ended up being in a worse situation than Fab. You know what I'm saying? He went back to confess to some something he did years ago that was eating at his soul. Um, I never saw Fab like Mace. I'm maybe I'm different. I don't maybe y'all was think his flow or something, but Mace rap the way he do and talk. That's how he talk. So his his it comes out smooth, but he talk like that. He talk like he's slow because Mace didn't speak until like he was like three four years old. They were sending him to school. Because they thought, like, man, something's wrong with him. Like, this kid's never going to talk. You know, he wasn't talking. So Mace didn't really talk to him. He was like three or four. A lot of people don't know that. but So that's why he has, like, a slow draw when he talks. Man, I tried to do a lot for a lot of people, dude. <laughs> and because at, at one point I was like, man, we could, you know, every the game was different. You know, now the people I know that was in the music business, they doing graphic de designs. <laughs> Nobody's really in the game no more. So people are like, yo, man, can you get me, you know, hooked up with this dude? I'm like, dude, I'm not, none of these dudes are music guys. That's in controlling the music business right now. You got these people that's promoting Takashi. You know what I'm saying? They trying to pay people to beef with people so they can, like, that's their promotion for an album. You know what I'm saying? So it's like these are the type of people who are in control of music. They don't even listen to the music. These are not people that listen to hip-hop. That's working in the radio stations. I mean, not the radio stations, but the record labels. Hell, even the radio stations, they don't listen to that. You think they, you think Ebro and them are walking around listening to the baby? <laughs> you, 
You think they they walking around listening to Trippy? Yo, that Trippy went hard, son. No. Radio stations ain't listening to that. Now, if they coming up to the radio station, then they forced to have to listen to a couple songs. Because they coming up there. But you think they really finna sit around there and listen to that? They not. Now, the record label's job is to just make money off of it and make more money than these artists. Keep getting they 70% and they cool. Let you flaunt, get you some money so you can flaunt it. You're going to go broke, can't sell no more records. They move to the next. They might even have you bring in the other rappers. If you bring in some other rappers, we're going to kick you off for a little bit of money. That way, you getting to eat. He come bringing some of his homeboys that can spit. Yo, this is my man's. He can spit. He come up, spit his lines. Get him a deal. He, Yo, I got a deal, son. Then that guy going to bring more people. And all they going to do is keep that record label going, putting those people, kids through college. Meanwhile, you can't even afford to send your kids to to college or pay the baby mamas you didn't made through the years of your success. Welcome to the new reality, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the new reality. Now, here's the scenario, right? You got all of these different talented artists. You got Lupe. You got Big Sean, who I'm going to speak about. You got Kendrick. You got all of these artists. J. Cole. You, you got a lot of creative artists out here that's making things happen then you got people that's in the way that's the distraction like the Kanye's the chance the rappers you know they just distractions you know they playing a political game and a whole bunch of BS so they just really in the way I just got a message. Shouts out to Jenny's page. She just got monetized. So she's very excited. That's what this message. Mm, that's cool. Shouts out to Jenny. Her page, Jenny Raw, Real and Unfiltered. Congratulations. You know, when you work and you want something bad enough, you know, things that happen. Now, back to Fab. <laughs> Diddy didn't get Fab to answer the guy's question. Diddy did not get Fab because of Fab's connections. You know, Fab had a bunch of gangster stuff going on around Fab before Fab really even dropped his actual album. 
you know, so, and people knew it, you know, they knew he was, had real people around. So, if you wanted to bring that environment in, Diddy had already had too much heat. So, even though he might have sound like Mace and everything else, you know, to y'all, <laughs> to me, it's no, there's a huge difference from Mace and Fat, but. You know, I prefer Mace before I listen to Fat. But the flow and the cadence, almost, it's, it's, it's Mace-ish. <laughs> because that, it was hot. The flow was hot. So everybody, I mean, everybody used it. So there's a lot of Mace flows flying around. But uh, anyway, I'm out. God bless. Be out, peoples.